Alright, welcome to Sideboard MTG. My name's Eric. It's time for Let's Play Jank. Tonight we've got a Aid from the Cowl deck for you guys. And um, no madness, it's not your mono green list, but it is an Aid from the Cowl deck. Um, I've chosen to go Naya with this deck. And uh, playing around with it a little bit, there's a couple spells that uh, are actually spells, not permanents. And that may or may not be a mistake, but... We're going to find out tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing if we can, uh, you know, kind of trick some stuff into play, have a little bit of fun. Maybe maybe this splendor will just be overwhelming. Who knows? Either way, if you like tonight's show, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you do hit the subscribe button, it'll behoove you to hit that notification button so that you know when I'm going live. Uh, for those of you that are used to me going live around nine, between 9 and 10 central, we're going to be trying to do that between 8 and 9 central from now on. Uh, we're going to try to move it back a little bit more, and as things change, um, we're going to be trying to get closer and closer to 8 central. So um, be on the, the lookout for me uh, going live a little bit earlier than normal. And other than that, that's all I've got for today. Let's jump into the deck. Let's take a look at it. Um, by the way, if you guys uh, do decide that you want to play this deck, Mana Traders has got you covered. There's a link in the description box below where uh, you can sign up for Mana Traders along with a coupon. Make sure you use the coupon, save yourself some money, 15% on your first three months. What's up everyone? How you doing? Justin Clay. Justin just posted his... Um, ta 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 his summoner deck. Um, Talani Summoner? Something like that? Yeah, I, I, that first name, it gets me. Anyway, um, he's uh, he's got a cool little deck over on the Reddit. You guys should go check that out. And uh, what's up, Rocker, Madness, and yeah, whoever else is here, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Uh, you're running Storm from the Vault, and how jank is that? I've been wanting to play around with Storm from the Vault. Um, I'm expecting to get to play around with that a little bit over the course of the next year. Storm looks really, really good, and uh, we won't be losing it anytime soon, so we've got plenty of time to play with that. But for tonight, and for our theme going forward over the next uh, month or so, we're going to be trying to play with some cards that really impressed people, that there looks like there could be some power there, and, um, you know, we just, we just really want to see if we can get these, these cards to, to fire off. Oh no, that is way too big. That's what happens when you're you're trying to uh, you know cut a um, cut a thumbnail, right? Right? When you're trying to cut a thumbnail from something like aid from the cow, you gotta make it really big, right? Anyway, mm. oh yeah, it's a strong cup. It's a good brew. Good brew. Anyway, we uh, we've got an aid from the cow deck here, and we're gonna be trying to ramp into that with a couple ramp spells. We've got a three mana ramp spell, a two mana ramp spell, and a four mana ramp spell. None of them are really your traditional ramp spells except for Gift of Paradise. Um, the um, Gift of Paradise is going to gain us a little bit of life, give us a little extra mana. 
Trove of Temptations, kind of what makes Aid from the Cowl work. I don't think that I'd really want to run an Aid from the Cowl deck without Trove. Um, and the way this works, let's look at Aid from the Cowl really quick. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put that onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put it on the bottom of your library. So if it's not what we want, we can bury it or we can leave it there. Which is pretty good. I mean, um, you know, if it's like, say, Approach of the Second Sun or something like that, we can leave it and just cast it the next turn. Um, however, if it's, you know, a permanent, whether it's a land or one of our many other permanents here, we're going to be able to just put that into play at the end of our turn. So um, there's not a lot of things going on here that's not going to give us a lot of value at the end of our turn. The biggest one here is actually going to be Settle the Wreckage, Approach of the Second Sun, or Chandra. Uh, if we hit a Chandra, yeah, okay, we got that at the end of the turn. We didn't have to pay for it. We got a free card. We're not going to be able to use her ability until the next turn, so she may just kind of be out there, um, which is kind of something that I'm willing to take the risk on um, because Chandra actually works as a as a four mana ramp spell for us so uh, we can play this on four and then hopefully on turn five we'll have a ton of mana uh, whether it's from you know our treasure maps our gift of paradise or maybe even the treasures that are coming off of Trove of Temptation now that everyone knows what Aid from the Cowl does, let's look at Trove of Temptation really quick. Each opponent must attack you or a Planeswalker you control with at least one creature each combat if able. Now, that may look like a downside to, to a lot of people at first glance that, oh, they have to attack. There's actually no downside to this card. If the opponent has a good attack to attack you, they're going to attack you. If they don't have good attacks, they're not going to attack. So if they don't have good attacks, they have to attack anyway. If they have good attacks, they're swinging anyway. So not a downside. I cannot see this as a downside, especially when our sideboard is full of first strike creatures. Okay, so we're going to actually turn what a lot of people look as a downside into an upside. Now the second piece of text on this card says, At the beginning of your end step, create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, sack, and add a mana of any color. Now, if we sack that treasure, that's going to trigger revolt for us. And uh, I know if you guys have, you know, looked around in the past, there's, um, you know, Sephiroth Olive did uh, a version of this deck long before um, Approach, or sorry, long, long before Approach of the Second Sun came out, um, before, you know, we got a lot of the newer cards. There was no Silways, uh, things like that back then. Um, but he also did another version of the deck later on, and all versions of his deck ran Trove and Aid from the Cowl. Now, I didn't really go by his version that much. Um, pretty much just the Trove and the Aid from the Cow. Other than that, I wanted some early removal. I wanted some silways, things like that. Sweltering Suns is kind of a, a no-brainer. We just kind of have to have it. We can always just cycle it. And then um, Settle the Wreckage. Settle the Wreckage is going to be one of those great cards that we're kind of hoping to get into. Um, and... Um, I'm running Cast Out. I personally think that Cast Out is exactly where I want to be because I'm running a couple copies of Sunbird's Invocation in the deck. And if we can actually cast a Cast Out at instant speed, there's a good chance that we might hit something like a Settle the Wreckage, be able to kill the ones that are attacking, and then the Cast Out will, will resolve, and then we can get whatever was left behind. So um, a lot of value there if we can get out something like our Sunbird's Invocation. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, we're looking at just keeping the board clear and then trying to cheat into play or ramp into play um, some of our bigger things. Now, those bigger things are Sunbird's Implication, um, which pairs pretty well with Approach of the Second Sun. If we happen to cast an Approach of the Second Sun from our hand, um, and there's another one in the top seven cards of our library, we can cast that one. The one from our hand will not resolve first, the one from Sunbird's Invocation will resolve first, and then the one from our hand will resolve, instantly winning the game for us. Now, I've got another deck that I'm playing around with um, that's Mardu, that actually runs Sunbird's Invocation and Approach of the Second Sun as, a, as the main win con. It's not necessarily the main win con here, and against certain decks, especially those with blue, 
we probably are going to be taking out the approach of the second sun. Now, against aggressive decks, we've got Plaka Worm. Now, if you want to use something like Sifter Worm or Carnage Tyrant, that's fine. I wanted to have seven converted mana cost here because that's going to help us get to that approach of the second sun, assuming we have our Sunbird's Invocation out. Plaka Worm is also a guaranteed way to gain seven life. We don't have a lot of really really big cards in here we're not going to be like revealing you know commit to memory or something like that so we're not going to have that opportunity to gain 10 life so i think that plaka worm is just going to be better here if you wanted to use sifter worm you definitely could um i'm going with plaka worm here it also allows us to draw a card if it dies so i'm okay with that and then i've got two enchantments here and honestly i um I could probably be running more Overwhelming Splendors. This is kind of the card that's going to let us just keep going and going and going. Awesome card. Um, I'm looking forward to getting an Overwhelming Splinter onto the battlefield and just wrecking some people. What is going on with our stream boss there? Um, it seems like it keeps reloading. Um, Mason, thank you for subscribing, sir. Um, let's see. My deck last night was pretty great, by the way. So many lines and value looking good. Thank you, Sis. Um, you're, you're one of the reasons I played it. it. I felt that it was a little bit jank. It's not really, um, it's not really you know, a deck that a lot of people would want to take to a tournament. But it's a ton of fun. There's so many lines. There's so many things. And the deck actually performed really well. Um, not that I haven't had it perform well in the past, but it performed really well last night to the point where I actually got to show off at some point in all the games, we got to show off pretty much everything the deck could do. So I was really, really happy with how the deck ran. So um, yeah, it was it was a ton of fun. And hopefully we can have some fun with uh, tonight's deck. You know, Overwhelming Splendor, we're making everything lose all abilities. The Scarab God doesn't come back. Hazard is a 0-1 with nothing. Um, Sandworm's Convergence, this is how we're going to stop opposing, you know, flyers and things like that. Um, you could definitely use more Sandworm's Convergence. Uh, this is one of our big finishers here, this or a Plaka Worm. Um, if I got rid of the approach of the Second Sun, I would probably just go for an extra copy of Overwhelming Convergence and an extra copy of Sandworm's Convergence. Uh, or, sorry, Overwhelming Splendor and Sandworm's Convergence. Um, however, I really just wanted to have a couple copies these approach now let's take a look at the board here and there's some there's some tech here but for the most part our sideboard is transformational um, against a, a deck that will be removing a lot of their removal spells and things like that uh, we're gonna be bringing in Knight of Grace like so if they have Baraska's contempts and fatal pushes and things like that Knight of Grace is gonna be absolutely terrific um, and then of course you got to remember that we have Trove of Temptation, so everyone, like, they have to swing into us. So if they have to swing into us, I wanted as much first strike as possible. And um, so I've got some Lyra's in here. If you guys check the links in the description box below, I actually didn't have Lyra in the deck there until I got to talking um, with a friend. And he's like, man, instead of Regal Caracol, like, you know Lyra was printed, right? I was like, you got a point definitely got a point um, so I actually backed off a couple regal caracals and one combustible gear hulk to give myself some more Lyra Dawnbringers um, just the lifelink in the first strike with them forced to swing into Lyra uh, could work really really well for us especially if we get down something like an overwhelming splendor and now everything's a zero one but they have to attack with something anyway at that point we just gained so much value that it's gonna be really really hard for our opponent to come back um, other creatures here are you know uh, regal caracal um, combustible gear hulk and then I needed a little bit more to answer the the, the control decks or the um, aggro decks and that's settle the wreckage and a braid that that's what we're gonna be using to answer them um, so that's the deck. I hope you guys like it. Give it that thumbs up, share it, whatever, and uh, let's uh, let's go have some games. All right. Okay. Okay, madness. Oh, you're talking to Justin. All right. You really love this deck. Uh, hopefully, it looks good on. Uh, Hopefully it looks good on paper and also on the field. Well, I hope so. I, I hope it, I hope that it's going to be really good. Um, you should add your white deck to the Reddit, but man, you already have two decks submitted for Sub Sunday. 
well, whichever one gets the most votes, man. You know, double up. Well, somebody's out of the tub. Um, we cannot keep this hand, and that's uh, that's a big bummer. I mean, I could turn one Groves, and then like next turn, back, like cast out, but I don't think that's where we really want to be. This looks so much better. We're gonna keep this and, and roll with it and see what happens. Hopefully, um, hopefully we won't just you know see red land go. Um, I'm gonna put that on the bottom. We already have one trove, and I think that's about all we're. That's a red land. Yep, that's a red land. So I think I'm actually forced to rootbound Craig here. Because we're not going to be able to bring that in untapped at any point here in the near future. Um, looks like turn four is going to be our trove of temptation. The opponent is, wow. Uh, we're buying a little bit of time here. Yeah. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and throw another rootbound crag now. We'll see if the opponent decides he wants to start burning us. Uh, but it doesn't look like it. Wow, just hitting lands and passing, huh, opponent? Okay, well, um, we'll play a, a Plains, which will allow our Sun Grove to come in on tap next turn. And then, I think from there, oh my goodness, the opponent still hasn't done anything? Um, I want to Chandra here. I, I, I don't think there's a reason not to Chandra here. And we'll just exile a card. Hopefully it won't be something that we really, really need. Um, this deck does kind of live off the top. We'll see. Okay, so he's just going to Lightning Strike Chandra. Possibly shock her as well. Um, okay. Okay. Um, aid from the cow. No. No, there went our aid from the cow. Okay, so depending on what he plays next turn, yeah, red decks uh, mana screw. They uh, they're they're hitting the mana screw. Although, I mean, he spent two turns or two cards to deal with Chandra, and we're a ramp deck. This is this is gonna get out of hand for him. I'm gonna play the the uh, the Trove of Temptation. Just because I want to get into my Sandworms Convergence as early as possible, um, if we can hit this Sandworms Convergence, then Red Deck shouldn't have a way to beat us. Um, yeah, like, I mean, it'll, it, it should just be game ending. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Poor opponent. Wow, I mean, um, I mean, jeez, opponent. Go green. And then I'm also going to play Chandra this turn. So we'll we'll see what he's got. I mean, he's getting up to six cards in hand. We'll play Chandra. Um, I really don't want to flip the top card, but we're going to anyway. Gift of Paradise. We'll say no to that. Burn our opponent for a little bit. And then pass the turn. If he wants to spend some cards here, then uh, that's fine. Next turn, we'll have Sandworm Convergence. And poor Red Deck will be out of out of commission. I don't think Red Deck can, can beat a Sandworm Convergence. Especially with us currently at 23 life. Like, this is over. Um, he can do whatever he wants, but I am pretty sure this is over. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to uptick Chandra before I play anything. Just in case something... <laughs> right? I'm going to play this. I'm going to play this. Uh, it could be wrong to play this, but I'm going to play it. I mean, just getting a Sunbird's Invocation onto the battlefield means that we're about to go really, really ham next turn. Okay, so Banefire might be good, but Banefire would be adding another spell that's not a permanent into the deck. 
And that's really not what we're looking for. Um, like, uh, Banefire is a spell, and I wanted to minimize the number of spells in the deck, and I don't think Banefire beats um, Approach of the Second Sun, so I'm, I'm good with not playing Banefire in this deck. Um, what is this, a Glorybringer? Okay, he Banefires Chandra for three. That's fine. So he's like, I guess, a burn deck, but this is not going to work really well for him. I'm going to save the scatter groves, and we're we're just going to we're just going to get our sandworm components down with some birds invocation. At this point, this game's over. Yeah, he, he's not even going to let us look. Okay, we would have cast Approach off the top. And then next turn, drew an Approach. No, we wouldn't have, because all these cards would have been in the bottom. So we could have cast Approach, uh, Plock of Worm, Seal Away. Uh, yeah. yeah. Definitely some stuff there. Um, so, at this point, our uh, Mr. Red deck here is not going to be taking out a lot of his burn, of course. Um, but I definitely want Lyra Dawnbringer. And I'm actually going to take out Approach of the Second Sun. Um, we're going to... So let's take out Approach, Approach. Plaka Worm is going to stick around. I want the Lyra Dawnbringer. I don't think we've got enough time for Treasure Map if our opponent starts hitting. Um, so we're going to go Braids. I'm going to get rid of a couple cast outs. You know what? I'm going to get rid of all the cast outs and bring in the other two settled. Maybe we shouldn't do that. We are an aid from the cowl deck. Maybe we should just leave two cast outs and be done with it. Um, but yeah, I'm just bringing in Lyra Dawnbringer here. Uh, if he was uh, you know, a, a black deck with a bunch of removal, we would actually bring in Knight of Grace. Um, we could probably also afford to bring in our other first striker. This guy does block. Um, this guy does block um, Hazard. But of course, you know, Plock of Worm does as well. Um, I'm going to take out Sandworm Convergence. Even though that is like a guaranteed win here, but yeah. Exactly, Justin. Lyra single handedly taking out a red deck. Like, it's like, whatever, dude. What do you got? Let's see it. Um, this is a decent hand, guys. I, it, it, it'll be hard for me to say no to keeping this hand. Um, because of all the ramp, Like this is kind of weird. I, I went with a very low number of, of lands in the deck, which is kind of kind of strange for me, I know. Um, especially with a deck that's trying to hit you know, Sandworm's Convergence and Overwhelming Splendor and things like that. But it's because we've got a ton of ramp, so um, we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to play my Forest Plains here. Um, that's going to allow Rootbound Crag to come in untapped. It's going to allow my Sun Petal Grove to come in untapped. Um, so at this point, we can pretty m opponent. Do you do you run lands in that deck? I mean, do you? Do you really? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a red source down here so that we can have the abrade open. <sighs> abrade art's not showing. I restarted Magic Online. I did, guys. I really did. Okay. The opponent, I guess, is just holding up those burn spells again. So, we're just going to pass the turn here. I may end up cycling this cast out. I may do it. Aid from the cow? Oh, yes, please. Well, I'm not sad that Red Deck is just getting screwed here. Um, maybe I should be, but I'm not. I'm going to cycle cast out. I want to see some more cards, and we currently have uh, a lot under control. Shepherd Dunes, maybe this, like, this is in there because of my sideboard Regal Caracals, and I took out some Regal Caracals for the Lyras, so maybe Shepherd Dunes no longer belongs. Um, 
originally the deck had more deserts in it and I was running Hour of Promise, uh, but I had to cut some of those. So maybe uh, some of the deserts should start coming out as well. Um, I'm just going to play an untapped land here and I'm just going to go ahead and get my Trove down. Um, just now that Trove's down, we can next turn Combustible Gear Hulk. Uh, hit like, the opponent just choked for too long. Um, yeah, he, he's just taking way too long to get off. He he mulliganed to nothing. I don't know what's going on with our opponent's poor red deck here. I'm doing it. Um, yeah, I, I'm doing it. I don't care. We're just going to slam this combustible gear hulk. See what happens. We've got a really good backup. I mean, he's got a braid. He's got a braid. I mean, two cards in hand. You're right. Yeah, the, the opponent is so mana screwed, and our deck is just firing off. Um, so, yeah. Why no Elvis Rejuvenator for land ramp and a body on turn three? Just don't need it. Uh, flat out, just don't need it. He gave us the cards... I'll throw some lands away here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't think we need Rootbound Craig anymore. So I'll just get rid of Rootbound. The opponent's so dead. He is so dead. Sarkin's Unsealing. Okay, so the opponent's got a ton of really big dudes in his deck and can't really get them off the ground and and doing things. Well, that's unfortunate, opponent. That is unfortunate. So, I'm going to go ahead and sack this um, treasure for a green. We're going to go another green. And I just want to leave up um, a braid here. We'll technically have three mana. But, we're just going to abrade him, swing with our... Um, our combustible gear hulk. We've got an aid from the cow going. Um, so here we go. Um, we get a cast out. Uh, I want to put the cast out onto the battlefield, and with that, we'll cast out Sarkin's unsealing. Yeah. And that's game. Yeah, that's it's about that's about the best thing he could hope for there. I mean. That, it, it was so screwed. Um, kind of feel bad for him, but he's playing red deck, so I don't feel bad for him. Um, <laughs> red deck, red deck players on arena are learning the hard way. They need to run fight with fire. You are right. Um, I think that red decks 100% need some way to deal with Lyra Dawnbringer. She can single-handedly defeat red deck. Um, she's just really, really good. Okay, well, I mean, not the worst hand in the world. Um, I'm more than willing to just, you know, turn three a Gift of Paradise um, into, um, you know, a Chandra and moving on up to um, Plaka Worm and go. So, yeah, this hand looks keepable. And we win! Okay. Um, that's... People just don't want to play with us. It was a good hand, too. Yeah. Rocker says he's starting to play with Fight, and fi fight with Fire in his red decks. Um, I think it's necessary right now. Elira Dawnbringer is definitely... Uh, she's a force to be reckoned with, so... Definitely. Ah, about time for a haircut. My hair's getting long. Okay, what can we do here? We've got Settle. We're going to need a little bit more mana to really make Settle work. Um, but I'll keep. I'll keep. We'll just start out with... Um... Oh, wow. Is it... Is it an is it deck? Alright, well. I mean, Bomat Courier may be a problem. Oh, come on, a braid off the top.
it asked me did I want to play. Whatever. Come on, lands. Definitely need some lands here. Right, there's a, I, I get that there's a lot of other things you might want to kill. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons Red Deck has been splashing black for the last couple months. Um, just giving them that ability to, to kill has been terrific. Unfortunately, Siren Storm Tamer can counter Settle the Wreckage. Which is very unfortunate for us. It keeps asking me if I want to block, like I have something to block with. Um, definitely got to get my Grove down here. I mean, the best thing we can do next turn is counter a Siren Storm Tamer, or a kill a Siren Storm Tamer with Settle the Wreckage. Wow, I mean, the opponent's coming at us here. I mean, this is four per turn. We've got to do something about this. Red line off the top would be terrific, though. I doubt he ever taps taps this down. No. I mean, this would be terrific, but we need a red source. Oh. The opponent might might have just been too with us with uh, four one drops here. Four one ones just gonna beat us down. Um, I mean, we're, we're going to make him sack his Siren Storm Tamer here. That's about all we can do. I doubt that he does anything other than sack a Siren Storm Tamer. He sacked a Pomac Courier. Okay. Um, he didn't sack. Um, I cannot believe the opponent did not sack a Siren Storm Tamer to, to kill us, or to, um, like, I can't believe that. I cannot believe the opponent didn't sack a Siren Storm Tamer. There's Tetsuko. Okay, so this is a Tetsuko deck. Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh... I'm going to look for a land here. I'm just going to cycle a Sweltering Sun. Alright, well, I mean, it's another land, which means that we can start getting our aid from the Cowls down. Um, we may have enough time. Earthshaker Kenra. Oh, that's not terrific. So, we're taking three more this turn. We may have to... down tick Chandra? Well, we can't even play Chandra yet. So, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six... We... don't have a lot of choice here. Not a lot of options. And then next turn, um, we'll either hit the eight, we'll either play the eight from the cowl and try to hit something, or um, we'll play an approach if we hit a land. If we hit a land, we're 100% we're playing approach and hopefully try to stabilize from there. Um, yeah. That is a throne. Ouch. Ouch. Come on, land off the top. We need you. We need you so bad, land. Oh, no. Good stuff, opponent. Throne of the God Pharaoh. Okay. Tetsuko's throne. Um, Alright, 100%. I... He's got a pretty fast deck. So, I want, like, all of these things. 
I'm also going to be uh, removing the sweltering suns, uh, which may seem a little bit weird, uh, but with all the siren storm tamers and such, I'm pretty sure that sweltering suns is out. I'm going to take out the treasure maps. Um, we're going to take out uh, approach. We're going to take out the approaches and. Maybe cut back on some other things here. What just happened? Oh my goodness. What happened to my deck? Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know where the rest of the deck went. Uh, <laughs> now we're losing everything. What? Where'd the rest of the dot go? My goodness. I'm just submitting. I, I, I literally don't know where the rest of the deck went. I, I have no clue what just happened, guys. Yeah, the deck just disappeared. So we got a 63 card deck here with 23 lands in it. Let's hope and pray. I'm going to mulligan. Uh, it's two lands. Okay. Uh, three lands. Yep, I'm going to keep that. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know what happened in the sideboard there. I really don't, guys. Like... I clicked to sort by converted mana cost and everything just disappeared. Bomat Courier. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no clue what happened. Um, just going to pass the turn. Hopefully we'll get to five mana. We'll get um, Lyra down. Um, Tetsuko. Tetsuko is going to make things a little bit difficult um, as we can't block with, say, something like Lyra. Just keep hitting those land drops. Absolutely. Plaka Worm would be huge. Well, this is about to get messy. It may, may get messy. It may get very messy. Tetsuko getting in. Tetsuko did not get in. Doesn't want to turn it sideways. Um, respecting the seal away. Good good on the opponent there for respecting the seal away. Um, well, can't, we can't block until we get rid of Tetsuko. So I think the point here is just going to be start getting in. Uh, we're just going to be as aggressive as possible. I mean, I'm sure he's got shocks, things like that. So, yeah. There's a Throne of the God Pharaoh. So we're taking six this turn. Land off the top, though, means Lyra Dawnbringer comes back, and we can start gaining quite a bit of life. Um, that is not a land off the top. Okay, so, I mean, I just swing. That's about all I can do. Um, and then we'll play another Knight of Grace. Again, the Knight can't block. And, I mean, he's just going to turn things sideways again with his Throne of the God Pharaoh. And, um, yeah. I mean, this uh, this Throne of the God Pharaoh here is doing some serious work, um, especially with this Bomat Courier. We can't do anything about it. We need this Lyra, and we need it now. Combat Celebrant. Settle the wreckage, please. Sunpetaled Grove does... Nothing. We're dead. We are dead. 
The opponent's jank is more powerful than ours. Um, just not having the ability, not hitting any of our red sources, none of our um, ramp or anything like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's... Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, we can't do anything. No blocks. Tetsuko getting work done. Like, that would have been really, really nice. Um, Abrades would have been nice. We wouldn't have been able to cast the Abrade. Um, Fanatical Firebrand. Yeah. And he's going to exert. Yeah. I mean, he's just got this lethal right here. And since we can't block, that's going to be game. Good game, opponent. Like, I don't know if a, like, I don't know. Like, um, let's just play another one here. Hexajon. Is that like Jonah Hex? All right, well, uh, we would love to play first. Oh, my goodness. Deck. All right, those are things. These are all things. I will keep. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to put that on top as well because that's going to provide us our colored mana, which is very, very important. Um, at this point, we're looking at uh, being in a fairly decent shape to, to get on in, uh, into the late game, so... Yes, I asked the opponent if he, uh, if he was a Jonah Hex fan. He said it's an Isapon? Isapon? All right, so we'll chef at Dunes here, and probably just going to cycle a cast out. Um, I want to get deeper into the deck for sure. Start finding some things that answer some stuff. Pyramid of the Pantheon. That was pretty cool. Turns into a, like a Gilded Lotus or something. Yeah, after you get three uh, counters on it, you basically have a Gilded Lotus. So that's pretty cool. And do what he does here. Kind of hanging on to some of my cards. I want to keep some stuff open. Maybe we should have played the the Gift of Paradise last turn. Um, but I'm really looking at wanting to be able to um, cycle these cast outs. Um, we could have done it. Again, we could have done it last turn. At the end of his end step. But I'm just kind of trying to be a little bit more patient. There's another land. I'll go ahead and pay another another life here. All right, there's a treasure map. It's not horrible. Another sweltering suns. Um, so we'll play um, scattered groves. I'm gonna play. We'll play our Gift of Paradise this this turn, and then just kind of go from here. All right. Well, the opponent is doing something. This is a Malfist Revolutionary. When it enters the battlefield or dies, for each kind of counter on target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another counter of that. Um, so he's going to have three on his uh, Pyramid of the Pantheon, which means that's kind of already a thing. Um, I mean, what, we're taking one here. 
Uh, if we go ahead and kill this, I mean, you'll have four on the Pyramid of Pantheon, which does nothing different. Uh, another land. So, we'll treasure map. Red, colorless, cast Sweltering Suns. He can get another counter on on that. We can uh, tap our treasure map at end of turn here. Probably just going to do it in response to whatever he does. So whenever we get a priority, we'll just do it in then F6. I'm also going to put the stop in my upkeep. Do I want the land? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's put it on the bottom. We're okay for right now. He's got four cards in hand. So, I mean, this was his his ramp. Like, okay, so he's ramped into a ton of mana now. Another Pyramid of the Pantheon. Uh, which he, he can tap this for three mana. Tap this for another one. If I was him, with this trigger on the stack... I would tap this, put mana, yeah, like, I would put two counters right here, put the trigger on the stack. I think that's what he's going to do. And then he can untap it, use the same mana, just do it again. Does he got something else up his sleeve? I mean, why would he tap the, okay. Alright, he realized he had other mana floating. There we go. Um, let's use our colorless. We'll scry. Let's put that on top. And then we'll go ahead and draw it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. We've got silk way up. We've got. Um, Tackle the sweltering suns. Um, should be good. You're loving the opponent's jank. Well, thanks, Steven. Glad, uh, glad our opponent's decks can impress you. Um, the last one was pretty cool. I mean, it was just a ton of one drops. I'm just gonna try to seal this away. And um, I mean, best case scenario, we get rid of. Uh, the Voltaic Servant. I'm going to go ahead. Do I want that land? One, two, three, four, five, be six, treasure, seven. Yeah, let's keep the land. We'll play a land for the turn. Play approach. So, double white. And then, um, green, sure. Approach! We've done it! We've approached the second sun! Um, yeah, it's all net deck all the time over there. That's because the, uh, the prices of cards are so much cheaper. Um, there's no value, so, like, I, I know I'm gonna I'm about to catch catch so much flack for this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. There's a lot of people out there that say they hate net deckers and things like that, and it's yeah they probably do hate net deckers. I'm like not a lie, they probably hate net deckers. Um, but but it's probably because they can't afford the cards, so you create a world where everyone can afford all the cards all the time, then you actually just feed net deckers. Um, so, come on, aid from the cow. Oh, that'd be perfect off the top. Come on, aid from the cow. Alright. Uh,
That's a settle. It's not exactly what we're looking for. But our opponent's only got one card in hand, so uh, we've got a little time. Well, I, I know, I know, guys. Like, it's... Oh, he's about to take extra turns here. He's going to get to put some counters on this thing. So he, he gets a counter on it. Um... Well, I think he might have just bought our... Nope, he played around the, the seal away. Just wants to take the extra turn right now. Um, you always tune net decks to, uh, to your liking. Let's see, a lot of people do that. A lot of people do tune net decks. And, you know, when a, when a meta is kind of starting to solve, it's kind of what you got to do. What's a net deck? <clears throat> Uh, a tier one deck, a deck that everyone's running. Um, when you look at the pros and things like that, they a lot of times they won't even try to play um, certain decks. Like uh, at the Pro Tour, the reason we've seen so many people with red black is because it was consistent. It was it was a sure thing. Like you're going to win more than you're going to lose if you're a good player with red black, and that's that's kind of the whole point. Like that's um, that's why people want to to net deck. Is because it's just safe. It's like, okay, we could play this jank that could be good, could be bad. We know that red black is a good deck, so why risk, you know, losing at a, a high stakes event by not playing something like this? And uh, that's kind of what we see the pros do. Um, uh, Apollo um, DDR, um, he he wrote a very good article about, uh, or uh, put a very good video out about. Um, net decking in general um, why pros take certain things to the, um, to the format or to um, different formats and such um, Sandworms Convergence will be decent here and then let's undo we'll go double green And he's going to get an extra turn next turn. I'm going to go ahead and sack a treasure. I want to see more cards. That's a Chandra. And we'll pass, but we'll have a 5-5. Five five, so... so our opponent's definitely got some good jank going on. He's trying to... Uh, he's trying to, to take a bunch of extra turns. But uh, no, back to the subject of... Um, of net decking and stuff. A lot of people net deck, and a lot of people say they hate net deckers, but it's because they don't want to go spend three, four hundred dollars on a deck. Um, and again, that's why I like mana traders. I like to play all the good decks. I like to play all the weird decks. I like to know what's going on with the deck. So I like mana traders. Um, it just lets me play everything. Um, no swing opponent. No swing. No swing. But I mean, he will take some extra turns. So. Um, let's see what chat's saying. Um, Ryan, like Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming. Right, um, yeah, that's net equals net wins. No, net as in the internet. Like, they didn't build a deck. They just got on the internet and played a deck. Like, found a deck and said, I'm going to play that. Um, that's what they mean by a net decker. So, um, oh, you looked up the the winning list from last GP or whatever, and you just ran it. That's a net deck. Um, can't attack. I, I've got nothing wrong with net deckers. Um, there, we know from the last couple bannings and things like that, last couple pro tours, there's about between 40 and 60 percent of people that net deck. You have tier one net decks and tier two net decks. Um, about 40 percent of the population, as far as as far as gaming, period, 40 percent of Magic the Gathering players will play the number one deck, just flat out. Um, they'll play the number one deck. All right, well, we made it, uh, unless he's got a counter for us. 
And next game. Um. So, like, as far as net decking goes, like, it's just part of magic. Like, you wouldn't have a meta if it wasn't for net decks. Like, if everyone built their own decks all the time, you just, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a meta, period. Like, it would be like, well, people are trying this and this and this. These are good strategies. And basically, net decking is when you have these pros and stuff crunch, crunch a ton of numbers and they start coming up with, hey, I'm going to play this, I'm going to play that. Um, you end up with net decks. Treasure map was really good there. Sweltering Suns is probably going to be great. A braid will probably be really good. Um, so I'm definitely going to bring in the abrades. I'm going to get rid of Treasure Map. Um, we'll back off on Settle the Wreckage and Cast Out. Our opponent clearly plays around Settle. Um, I wouldn't mind... You know, I think I just want to, to combo harder than the opponent. Let's just leave the Treasure Maps in. Um, we bring in, you know, a Braids and roll with that. Letting our opponent know we think his deck's really spicy and cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's just part of, part of magic. But we know that about 40% of the, of the population plays the best deck out there. And then another 20% is going to play, you know, just under the best deck, right? Um, I told the opponent that um, that stream our stream's uh, liking his deck, and we think it's a, a spicy brew, and he says, Hi, stream. Um, so, let's... Uh, this braid's going to be sweet, right? Let's keep this. See if we can get into the Chandra and do things. Uh, we'll just start out with a Scattered Groves, and then we can just kind of do whatever we need to from there, so... Um, Madness says, Zach Zadillo, one thing um, you're not a fan of is taking risk and believing in your deck is the ultimate test of a brewer and a good player. If um, you hadn't taken the chance on your elves list, you um, likely wouldn't have um, gone 4-0. Um, yeah, you're right. Like That's one of the greatest feelings in the world is to build something and then it work. Um, I had that exact feeling last night. Um, I had been playing and tuning with, you know, my Ballista deck. Um, I really, really liked that deck, and to be able to to show it off and for it to actually perform, we we lost to zombies, but the rest of the time the deck was performing, um, and that was terrific. Well, all right, opponent, got those duresses. It seems good. He is a three mana duress. Bye bye, Chandra. Uh, depending on what the opponent plays here, we may just um, abort this. Well, I'll definitely abort it. And then this turn, we'll just play a Gift of Paradise. Maybe we'll get a basic we can put it on? No? Not that lucky? Alright, well, I mean... Bam, there we go. The opponent's got Inventor's Fair in the deck. That's pretty cool. Um, the, prob the problem is that pairing and free play are partially based on your... What list? On your card list? Really? There's no way they, they they pair you based on cards you have, do they? One, two, three, four, five. We need one more to get this Sunbird's Invocation down. Probably going to cycle this cast out to try to get the Sunbird's Invocation down. Um, the opponent's got four cards in hand, but he's not doing a ton right now. So I'll go ahead and cycle. We get a seal away. I'm going to cycle another cast out. I really, really want to hit my land drops. I mean, we're just cycling cast out after cast out. Sure. Whatever. 
Uh, Justin Clay says he likes building a deck, then uh, going to FNM and deciding uh, where it's weak and tweaking it over and over. So that's actually my problem, and my wife's constantly on to me about it. She's like, oh my goodness, would you please quit changing your deck? And I'm, I'm real bad about it. I, I rarely quit changing my deck. Um, every week I want to, to tweak it. I want to do something else. I want to try something different. And... Yeah, it's um, it's always fun. Like um, I played a Grixis mid-range deck for a long time back when everyone was playing Teamer Energy, um, and that was just because I wanted to be playing Grixis mid-range. You know, I, I just wanted to be playing Grixis, and everyone else was playing Teamer Energy, and they're like, Grixis is not good right now, and then like another set later. We have a banning, Grixis is no longer great, and he negated our Sunbird's Invocation. Uh, a brewer's gonna brew, right? A brewer's gonna brew. Um, like, our opponent's got a spicy brew here. And he's definitely... Like, was he just needing one more? Oh, he was just not wanting to, to play these because there was just no point. I mean, can he... Okay, he gave himself an energy. That's not too horrible. Um, we'll go green. And we'll just aid from the cow. We're not going to get any value off of it, unfortunately. But, um, I mean, if we do happen to start getting something to give us some value, we'll be doing great. That's kind of how you felt with your Rebel and Riches deck. Understood. Um, Rebel's... Rebel's one of those those cards. Like, I, I've tried Rebel in a pure control deck. Um, and, you know, it was a ton of fun. Like, it really was. Like, it's like, okay, I'm just going to kill everything. And I'll just... I'll get my treasures from your creatures. And... I did. So, you know, that works. Um, I mean... Come on, land? That's a land. Block a worm? Okay, so it... Yeah, I think I block a worm. I mean, Plock of Worms seems pretty good to me. Like, this will be hard to beat. Um, Brendan Bellion says, with your deck, and there may be uh, nothing wrong, but uh, the decks that pros come up with or that people are... Um, trending to run, just uh, do what your deck does better. And that's right. Like uh, I call it outclassing. Uh, more than, more likely than not, your opponent's decks can just uh, like if they're running net decks, they'll outclass you in cards. Um, the Scarab God's a perfect example of it. You can be running so many cool things, and then the Scarab God just outclasses so much. So one, two, three, four, and we can still, eh, I'm going to do this. We'll sacrifice our desert. I mean, I could wait one more turn and then we get multiple aid from the cows on online, but I'm okay with this. I mean, he may have some way to just bounce it. And if he does, then cool. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to swing for 10. See what happens. He does nothing. Just takes it. Well, we did trip this turn, so we're going to get something off the top, hopefully. We have a Chandra. And yeah, we'll put that on top. Did I put it on top? I should have put it on the battlefield. I should have put it onto the battlefield. Good chance it would have been 
just destroyed though. Winding Constrictor. Voltaic Servant. Can he get in here? No swings by the opponent. Um. Okay. I'm gonna swing. I mean, blocking block of worms not the greatest thing in the world for him here. Oh, he's gonna put enough in front of it to kill it. Um, so I really want the Voltaic Turbant to die. I wouldn't mind one of the Constrictors dying. So we'll do that and then not kill um, these guys. Now this is going to kill our Plaka Worm. Which is kind of exactly what we're looking for. So I'm just going to play the other eight from the cow. So we'll draw a card. We get another seal away. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go eight from the cow. We'll go double green. And I'm going to leave open that white land. And we'll see what we get here. Okay, so the first trigger says it's a plains. We're going to say put that on the battlefield. The second trigger says it's an abrade. Uh, do we want an abrade? I'm going to go to the bottom with a braid. And then now we've got a seal away for backup. Yeah. There's another Voltaic Servant. Like, he should just have a ton of artifacts and stuff. Ooh, we can pay one, discard a card to explore. Well, I will 100% see the way one of these guys, just to make some use of the card. Like, we should be pretty close to, to being online enough now where losing will be very, very difficult. Um, let's just Sandworm. Like, I, I don't really think there's a good reason not to Sandworm's Convergence here. Um, he might have... He might have, like, a Sculptors he can stop it with. Um, but if he doesn't, then we're going to be looking pretty good. There we go. Um, Sandworms Convergence. Sandworms will converge. Alright, so back to the subject of talking about net decking and things like that. Um, I think it's healthy. Like, if... Really? Okay. Oh, it's got Menace. My bad. Forgot about the Menace. My bad. Definitely getting in. Yeah, illegal block. Like, there's no way he can kill this worm. I mean, you think he would actually kill the worm? No, okay, so he, he doesn't try to kill the worm. I could approach. Let's approach. Let's not approach. Let's just steal away. way. 
and then pass. I mean, yeah, there's other things we could do, but at this point, we're getting multiple worms. Um, yeah, like, it, it's just great. He's going to push it off a cliff, Eric. <laughs> If he, if he kills it, if he pushes it, that would have been terrific. We would have had two triggers from our um, aid from the cow, which would have been just phenomenal. Like, I know the opponent wants to do crazy stuff here, but it's just not going to happen. Which also means that he's not going to activate our craziness. He's just We're just not going to get... Uh, to do our crazy here. This should cause a scoop. I really, really, really want to see the next couple cards. Like, this is how bad I want to see the next couple cards. That's right. I shot one of my own sandworms. Aid from the cow says forest. Alright, we'll grab forest. Aid from the cow says aid from the cow. We'll take the aid from the cow. Sandworm convergence says have another sandworm. Um. Yeah. The opponent's still playing it out, though. Uh, much love for the opponent. Look at that! He's got his own Sandworms Convergence. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we can't get in with Flyers. Sunbirds Invocation. I'm doing it. Um... So, I'll attack with both. He blocks one. He has to block the other as well. Which means bye-bye snake and triggers. Yay, triggers. Uh, Rootbound crag, battlefield. Uh, Trove of temptation, battlefield. Gift of paradise, battlefield. Put it on basic land. Not even worried about it. Make a dude pass. So yeah, we're pretty unlosable here. Look at all those cards, right? Um, opponent said, "Good game." By stream. All right, we're gonna we're we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. Sunbird's invocation revealing seven cards. Um. Oh man. Treasure map. Then exile top card of our library. To Chandra. Play Chandra. Oops. Um. There we go. We'll play Chandra. Keep Chandra. Um, I mean, we attack her, he's dead, of course. 
so we don't even we don't even get to see our triggers go off things like that um yeah nice game okay well uh move on to the the next game here mono white life gain aggro uh while you're at it madness is just putting up all kinds of uh, ideas over there Okay, well, it's not the greatest hand in the world. Any land gets us into Gift of Paradise, which should help out. So that's okay. I'll keep this. We'll just start with a Hatship Oasis. All right, we're gonna need land at this point. You gotta go to, you gotta, you gotta go do work, guys. Talk to you later. We'll see you, Justin. You take care, sir. No, not like this. Not like this. You wanna run a twenty-three land deck? You know that happens. We'll we'll definitely try to smash smash for you while you're gone, sir. Brutal. Uh, what am I getting rid of? Placa worm. It's gonna be a long time before we're casting a placa worm. There's a land. Alright, Gift of Paradise. I mean, if he's got a way to counter this, he really should. I mean, if he goes Bolus this turn, kind of okay with that. Like, I, I, We can survive a Bolus for a turn. Champion of Wits. Uh, let's see what he throws away. Is this some some kind of Naya ramp control deck? Oh man. Uh, well, this is a trove of temptation, aid from the cowl, as many permanents as we can cheat onto the battlefield. We're gonna try to do that. So we get rid of land, land, land. We get a scavenger ground, which is decent. Um, I'll play Chandra. Yeah, we'll just play Chandra here. Um, if Chandra lives, that's that's going to be a really really good time for us. Um, I will plus Chandra for two red, and then we'll use this extra green here, and we'll cycle one of these um, sweltering suns. All right, so we're starting to hit some land drops. Uh, we'll see what we can do against this Grixis deck. He didn't have like uh, you know those those early aggressive drops with like um, the glint sleeve Typhoners and things like that. So um, Veraska's contempt. All right, well, it was worth a shot. Getting in, you go up on it. Um, so Sun Petal Grove here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Trope. We'll go double red and just play our trove and then pass. Um, so this will this will help us ramp.
Yeah, it's a it's a Naya Naya ramp deck. Um, it's not really a ramp deck. It's more about just trying to get value um, out of things you probably normally wouldn't get value out of. There's a Glint Sleep Siphoner. Well, that means I'm not cycling the Sweltering Suns. I will cycle a cast out, though. That's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seal away champion blitz. I mean, I could have cast of approach approach right there. Harness lightning. Okay. I mean, we could just, like, cast it out as well. Right? If I hadn't used the scattered uh, scavenger grounds, we could have done that. Oh, well. I don't think we lose this game one anyway. You still have some challenges from Rush and Zaxi Boy. What's up? Kadamea Soul. Nico Bolas. Um, I'll get rid of a black worm. We'll cast, cast out. So, double white. Let's see if we can grab this nickel bolus. I mean, we got our trove down. I would love to find a, an aid from the cowl now. Like, getting something like Overwhelming Splendor would just be so sweet. So sweet. But we get to cast out Bolas. I mean, we'll take two here, which I'm okay with. Like, he's got to have so many dead cards in hand. What is... Okay. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and try to approach. So we'll cast approach. Pass the turn. The opponent will keep drawing cards off his Glint Sleeve Siphoner. I mean, we could deal with it. We could sweep the board. Um, but as of right now, we're trying to get to our win con, so. Um, but yeah, we, we were talking earlier about uh, Arena, and I, I just think that when you, you level the playing field on price, you're just going to have more and more people go, well, why would I want to try to brew when I can just simply play, you know, the best deck out there, you know, for the same price as building a brew. And sometimes building a brew in a world where the Scarab God costs the exact same as your regular, you know, you know, 50 cent rare out there. I, th I think that a lot more people will play with, you know, higher tier cards. So boredom. What? Oh, I have 14 life on the back burner anyway. I, I'm sorry, Steven. I know this is really boring. We're we're not doing many things here. Yeah, I'm sorry, Steven.
Not even worried about the mana. Should I cast it? Just... Just get rid of the, the Glensleaf Siphoner? I'm gonna cycle it. Yeah, I just want to cycle it. Treasure map works. I mean, that's something. And... I mean, we have a, an infinite source of treasures here with our Trove of Temptation. So, I mean, we've got some time. Treasure map will help us scry down to our approach and then just kind of go from there. We just don't want to shuffle the library. I mean, the opponent is throwing away cards like Argyle's Bloodfast, stuff like that. I'll go ahead and scry. We'll put that on the bottom. We'll stop in our upkeep. We'll scry again. Nickel bolus, cool. Well, we don't have anything. So our upkeep, we will... We'll scry. Uh, we'll put that on top. Seems fine. Go ahead and draw. Pass the turn. Um, that's about it. That's about all we can do here. Trope means he's going to be attacking with something. Um, I mean, if he attacks with Bolus before he tries to activate it, then um, that'll be good news for us. Oh, he's got some stuff going on here. Glimmer. Glimmer, glimmer. Oh, you're just talking about, like, board with, uh, they had a good idea with Brewer's Delight, um, but it wasn't, uh, well implemented. Um, what was Brewer's De Delight, Stephen? Um, just curious. Oh, he's going to attack before he flips the bolus! so sweet. This opponent's awesome. He scoops to the settle. He just scooped to the settle. He's like, no, I'm scooping. I'm scooping. He should have played around it. Um, playing around settle would have been really good. Uh, Knight of Grace is going to be great here. Um, settle the wreckage. He probably want won't do that again um, I'm expecting him to bring in like um, negates and things like that uh, I'd say he's going to take out most of like I expect him to take out quite a few things uh, I'm gonna get rid of the sweltering suns I'm gonna get rid of Probably some of our bigger stuff. Uh, I mean, Sandworm's Convergence will stop Bolus and the Scare uh, Or just create a blocker for him. Um, Bolus can't swing at all. I'm going to keep in Overwhelming Splendor. I'm taking out the Sandworm's Convergence. Um, Approach of the Second Sun. We're going to take that out. I'm going to try to win with creatures this game. So the only other thing that I may want to take out of the deck. I mean, we could go no settle at all and just try to just try to beat him. Let's try this. Like a braid may be good here, just to be able to deal with the the early glint sleep siphoners and things like that. So uh, it was a league where you'd pay 500 um, GP and play until two losses or three wins. Oh, I remember that. Um, and you'd get several cards that were. Um, 
for tier three list. Um, like the cats rares. Oh, okay, and you were supposed to uh, to play with janky decks. What it ended up happening was people fighting uh, red deck wins with their um, their pyramid decks. Yeah, that that seems about the way Magic kind of rolls. All right, guys. Um, this hand looks a little bad. <clears throat> looks bad. I'm gonna mulligan. This doesn't look a ton better, but a little bit better. This Knight of Grace is probably going to be heavenly. I'm going to leave that on top. And then we'll just start with our Scattered Groves and um, go from there. Is he really... <clears throat> Second main phase lander on turn one. Oh, i got to get this out of my upkeep. Scattered Groves, pass. So, I'm expecting the opponent like got rid of a ton of kill spells, brought in some counters, things like that. So, I'm not even going to worry about it. Uh, another 8 from the Cowl. So, turn 3, we can play this and it, it just really won't matter. So, I'm just going to go ahead and rootbound Crag and get my Knight of Grace down. Um, and we're just going to try to be as aggressive as possible. Yes, this is my deck, Logical Order. Um, this week I'm trying to run all my brews. Um, like, you guys were asking for some original decks or original builds. Um, it's kind of hard to have completely original builds. Like, we know that certain things have just kind of happened. Like, um, the, the one thing that I definitely took from Sephiroth Olive's version of these decks a long time ago was um, he ran Aid with a Cal with Trove of Temptation, and I think that that is just kind of like a combo. Like, you just should run those together so that you can trigger the Aid from the Cal absolutely every turn. Um, so I took that and then just kind of build around it. Um, there's a couple things that you just naturally want to put into the deck, like Sandworms, Convergence, and Overwhelming Splendor, so they just kind of they end up there anyway. And then, um, other than that, like, the, the deck's just pretty straightforward. Um, you just put in, you know, all the best permanents you can for control and things like that, and uh, just kind of roll with it. So, I mean, that the deck kind of built itself. As far as, like, colors and things go, like, what did I want to, to play with or use? There's a gift, gift of paradise. Um, we'll gift this. So, we'll definitely be able to get down an 8 from the cowl next turn. Um, even if he boluses us. So, hopefully we'll find like a trove soon so that we can trigger that 8 from the cowl more often. Um, that's not bad. So we'll go double green, white, red, and I'm just going to leave up white here for cycling. And then we'll pass. Um, I mean, enchantments are going to be really hard for, for Grixis to beat, so. Uh, random prediction here, but with Boros being a guild featured in the next set, you think either Mardu Knights or Boros Soldier Tribal um, being a thing. I'm actually expecting Mardu Knights. Yes, I think Mardu Knights is very, very close to being a good deck right now. <laughs> Nerb, cast out your own gift of paradise! That could work. That could work. And later, we just cast out our own cast out. The problem with cast out is you have to get a target that an opponent controls. So, unfortunately, that won't work for us. Um, but we can always just cast out something like, I don't know, this Scarab God. Um, so we'll go double white, white, red. 
and cast the scarab god or cast out the scarab god and go from here. I mean, the opponent's definitely got a you know a high powered deck. I mean, he's running a braids to you know duress it glimmers. Um, he's got a, a beautiful mana base. And here we are playing Aid from the Cow, right? Does he bolus us this bolus us this turn? Is the question is that is this the bolus? That's a Liliana. Not gonna get a lot by you with Liliana, but you can get enough. Record check. Um, have we lost yet? Well, this will be fun. Combustible Gear Hulk. And then, does, like, does he throw things in our graveyard? He's got Torrential Gear Hulk that he can bring back. Ooh, he threw them away. And he got a. He got our trove in two lands. Well, good for you, opponent. Good for you. So next turn, he may have the kill spells to get rid of uh, Combustible Gear Hulk. Maybe he doesn't. Drains TM. What's up, guy? Um, you're kind of new to the chat. Mm, I don't remember the name anyway. Although, I, I get it, we're getting to the point where me remembering everyone's going to be really hard, but um, if you've been here before, then welcome back. Um, love it when they tap out to play the Scarab God. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Uh, especially when you're holding an answer in your hand, and you know that it's going to resolve. Also, when you know that Grixis can't destroy an enchantment, it's pretty decent. It's pretty decent. I mean, he can bring back, like, Bolas here, which isn't bad. I mean, bringing back Bolas would do some serious work. Um, it's probably his best bet. He's going to bring back Torrential Gear Hulk to abrade our combustible Gear Hulk. Um, we're going to need something big at this point. Something very big. Did we lose? Did we lose a, a game earlier? Unfortunately, Aid from the Cowl is not going to work on our, um, our opponent's turn. Well, this is not the greatest. Not the greatest. So, I would actually expect our opponent to go land... Down tick Liliana, bring back Bolas, make us discard our last card, pay seven mana, flip Bolas, bring back Liliana. Like, he's got his kind of thing going on, so. Um, <clears throat> what have you walked back into? Um, a wall. A wall. A wall of creatures that I don't know if we can beat. Yeah. So, I mean, if the, if the opponent has another land here, definitely, yeah, brings back Bolas. We will get rid of our aid from the cow. I don't even have a land I can sack. Yep, that's game. Uh, we're looking at, yeah, lethal on board. Leave the board, so the opponent's got us here. Um, one hundred percent want the settles. Cast out's great. Knight of Grace is great. Seal away is great. Um, we'll get rid of combustible gear hulk. I don't want to get rid of an aid from the cow, but I'm going to. Uh, I'll get rid of Sunbird's Invocation. One Plock of Worm. 
go. Let's get two block of worms and bring back in our sandworm convergence, and then run it like that. Um, hopefully, we can get to Lyra Dawnbringer, uh, something of the, that nature. We can't take out our ramp spells or our cycling uh, because of the 23 land. It's kind. We're kind of just like really, really stuck on those. Right? Maybe we do need the treasure maps and just back off of a seal away and a knight of grace and just run it like that I mean I'm good I'm good with putting treasure map at the back in the deck um, treasure map does a lot for us anyway so but then again so does um, a braid and cards like that so I mean I really just want to, to try to get this aid from the cowl to kind of fire off so um, hopefully hopefully we'll get it to fire off this game um, Lots of new folks lately, says Boopy. Um, if you're newer here, don't be afraid to post comment, brew on the subreddit, lowercase, lowercase r, forward slash, sideboard MTG. Absolutely. Um, we're always looking for, for new brewers. We're looking for new ideas, new innovations. And if people like your decks, we'll play them on Subscriber Sunday. I normally play uh, three decks every Subscriber Sunday, so... Um, if you post a deck, you'll at least get some feedback. Like as you can see here in chat, these guys are constantly going, "Hey, look at this deck! Look at that deck!" And if you post something that um, that people like, they're definitely going to check it out. A braids to kill the gear hulk. I maybe maybe we should. Someone say brew. <laughs> Zach Sadillo, one of our resident brewers. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, for those of you wondering, like, why we're playing so much jank this week, um, I'm wanting to play a lot of decks that that are just going to be going away soon. Um, decks that we're just not going to get a lot of a lot of repeat out of. Like, we're just not going to see these after rotation. You're not going to see an aid from the Kyle deck after rotation. Will this card ever make it to modern? Doubt it. Um, is it a cool card? Yeah, it's a cool card. Um, but after rotation, it's just gone. I'm going to keep this. Not the greatest thing in the world, but we do get our Knight of Grace, um, so we can start doing things with that. Uh, we'll go ahead and play our Scattered Groves, and then, you know, we've got Seal Aways, we've got uh, we're one resource away from being able to to play um, our Trove of Temptation, which at that point we should probably never have mana problems ever again. So, um, Knight of Grace here. We're just going to try to start getting in. Oh my god, opponent. What heck? The opponent skipped his turn. Um, I have sixed because I was tapped out. And the opponent was just, I guess he was just spamming. And um, so, punt from the opponent causes him to, to just pass. Um... It's not easy playing online, is it? Um, it's, like, it's easy to punt. All right, guys. We've got one more game we're going to play here. This is going to be the last one for the night. But, yeah. No, no. Aid from aid from Cal will never, never make its way to modern. Like, there would have to be some crazy things going on um, to see aid from the Cal in modern. I'm going to keep... Uh, we've got our trove. We can cycle. We've got... Prey Seeker. Is he seeking prey? We'll just play Forest and Past. Um, now we've got the Sun Petal Grove. So, yeah, things are looking up here. Alright. I mean, I, I could have played the Sun Petal Grove here so that I could have cycled the cast out, but I'm not even interested in cycling the cast out at the moment. Um... We're looking at next turn, Gift of Paradise, turn four, uh, Grove of Tempta or Trove of Temptation. There's the Champion of Wits, which is fine. So he throws away Fatal Push, Essence Scatter. Oh man, we may get to do some really cool stuff in a last game. We may get to do some cool stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if we will or not, but this could happen. This could just go crazy. 
Hopefully it does. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> Is this another champion of wits? Oh, he's just going to do impossible. So there goes Sunbird's Invocation. Okay, well. Oh, darn. I can think he has to take Sunbird's Invocation. He can't with the card, and the card is way too much value. So, I don't think he can avoid... Yeah, there we go. He took Sunbird's. Like, for those of you that have never played against or played a Sunbird's Invocation deck, they are broken. Like, the card itself is absolutely broken. Um, so, I'm going to go Forest... We'll play our Trove. And then next turn, we maybe can get down our aid from the Cowl. And um, go ham from there. Like, that's the plan, anyway. Argyle's blood fast by the opponent. We take two. Going to 19. We get a... Oh, my God. Okay, so we're going to go green, 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 use those green, and red. Aid from the cow. Unless he has a counter right here, we should get to start doing great, great things. Alright, so we'll pass. We've already uh, triggered our revolt for the turn. So let's see what we get. All right, I'm going to yield to this. And... He's going to draw a card. Cost him an energy to do that. Uh, we get a rootbound crag. We'll put that on the battlefield. And... Pass the turn. Next turn, we get to, uh, to do some cool stuff, like um, play Sunbird's Invocation. Like, we're not just dead here, so... Was this a Bolus? It's a Bolus. Alright, so he can have Sweltering Suns. Block a Worm! It's going to be a great follow-up to our Sunbird's Invocation. And, of course, we're going to sack our treasure to cast this. And then, um... Like, we could just cast Block of Worm this turn. But I want to cast Block of Worm next turn and then just kind of go from there. So, we'll make another treasure. We get a Settle the Wreckage. Do I want another Settle in hand? I think I'll put it on the bottom. So yeah, just casting Plock of Worm next time's go next turn is gonna be great. Um, all right, let's do it. So I'm gonna cast Plock of Worm with a uh, a revolt trigger here. So use that. One, two, three. Tomorrow we play Mardu Sunbirds. That's fine. You can counter the Placa Worm. I may just get another one anyway. You don't know. You just don't know. Uh, we do get another Placa Worm. Or we get a cast out. Um... I kind of just want another Plocka Worm. And just say, what? Here's Plocka Worm. Yeah, I'll cast Plocka Worm. So, we get a, we get one anyway. And now we get a, uh, a Trove. We get an Aid from the Cow. Of course we'll put that on the battlefield. We'll go ahead and get our Treasure. And things are looking up, guys. Things are looking up. What's up, Carter? How you doing? Aid. Aid. Right? 
you hadn't heard of Aiden into the cow until Madness was talking about his deck. And Madness has got a mono green version of the deck. I personally don't think that mono green has enough um, enough to to really make a uh, make a stand in in the meta at all. Like I don't think that you could really you know fight against like these bolus decks and things like that with a mono green version of it. But being able to cheat in like really big creatures like Block of Worm, Sifter Worm, uh, Sandworms Convergence, things like that. That's that's great. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of value there in mono green. I personally think that an aid from the cow deck just really needs to have that that green red shell. Um, I splash white in this one because, for one thing, I can cast a um, sure. I can cast a um, cast out in combat and with uh, some birds invocation, which you guys will see more of that when you see the Mardu. Oh, this will be great. This will be great. All right, so let's do this. Let's go red, green, red, red. We will cast Chandra. We'll get something off the top. Oh, we'll we'll cast a seal away out of this. Seal away the champion of wits. We'll get Chandra. Um, now I'm going to... You know what? Cancel. Let's exile the top card of our library. See what we get. It's a trove. Nah. We're good. Now we're going to cast our, um, our cast out. Which will trigger our Sunbirds Invocation again. So we'll look at the top four cards of our library. And I want to see what was on top. We would have got another Chandra. So we could have just cast another Chandra. And got another uptick. Or something like that. Um, so yeah. That. Grixis huh. Grixis is um, not faring so well against us. I think against Grixis. Since we're, we're getting a little bit more practice here against Grixis, we just bring in Regal Caracal, I mean, um, Lyra Dawnbringer and the Knights of Grace. I'm going to take out, cast out all together. Even though that may or, may or may not be right, we'll run Settle the Wreckage, get rid of Sweltering Suns, and. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Um, let's see what else we get. What else do we take out here against Grixis? Plaka Worm. Like, we should keep the Plaka Worms and just go for the approach. Or, and, like, take out the approach. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. We'll just keep Plaka Worm and take out approach. Go from there. Um, you made a jank rotation-proof journey to eternity deck, but uh, the best targets I could think of are Plock of Worm, Bells and Lock, Galtha, and um, Carnage Tyrant. So, like, when are you ever going to play that deck? Ever? Are you going to take your rotation-proof deck to Friday Night Magic and play it against the current meta? Um, because then you're shooting yourself in the foot by not playing with certain cards. Um, we have lands. I'm going to keep this. We got treasure map, seal away, gift of paradise. Um, so, like... Right. Uh, enter the battlefield triggers are definitely great there. Uh, but when are you ever going to play that rotation proof deck? Are you going to take it to F&M? You're going to play it against our current meta? And... If you're wanting to keep it until the next set comes out, you know there's going to be a new set of cards, and there's going to be new decks being played, all of these things. Your your rotation-proof deck is probably, after rotation, you know there's a whole set coming after rotation, right? Like, so there's going to be a whole bunch of new cards that you could or could not 
but you'll change it up, right? So now you're, you're currently putting effort into building a deck that you don't even know... I, I just don't get it. I do not understand rotation proof decks. I, I the 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 concept is it blows my mind. Why do you want to, to shoot yourself in the foot by not playing with cards that you could be playing with right now, or why are you trying to build a deck that won't use the new set? So you're shooting yourself in the foot after everything rotates. When we get all these new cards, you're still not like. And we don't even know what the meta is going to be like. So any plans or attacks or or strategies that you may currently be trying to run, those are going to be null and void come next um, next block. So I mean, like, I, I just I don't understand rotation proof. I know, guys. I know. I, people love it, and I think the only people, only t reason people are actually like on rotation proof decks are because. So do we get a negate right here? Like, do we take one of his negates? Cause he has to, he has to try to stop this other way. All right, fine. Um, but like, I think, I think it's our fault as content pro uh, content creators. Like, and when I say our fault, I mean YouTube, um, YouTube uh, videos, things like that. Like YouTube creators, like content creators. Period. Period. I think it's our fault. Um, like. Magic content gets really stale after the Pro Tour, so um, I can just root here, Gift of Paradise. Yeah, we just do that. Um, but I, I just like content creators. Like after the Pro Tour, everybody kind of is like, "Yeah, this is what the meta is going to be." People aren't really interested in and jank people aren't interested in trying other things um like that's i think that because of that you know a lot of content pr uh, creators um you know like dev dev does spoilers things like that um for my end of season content i'm trying to actually um uh, i'm trying to actually do what does he do take away silway here like he, he can't let... Oh, he's going to let us keep Sil away. Alright. Getting rid of the treasure map. Uh... Okay. But yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things. Like, you... Towards the end of the season, you gotta do other things. You gotta, you gotta start creating something else that people will watch and... And people look at spoilers and they go, okay, you know, well, no one wants to, to see a new deck right now. Well, I think if anything else, I, I, I think that, that, you know, these last chance decks that we're doing, maybe that maybe that can be a little bit more fun than, than maybe I should just cast my silhouette right there. Just bam, what? You're not getting any value. Um, but... Yeah, I, I I like the idea of, of just going with um, man, I need some action. Uh, I like the idea with you know like these last chance decks. Like this deck's going to go away. This deck's going to go away. We're not going to have options for this deck. We're not going to have things for this deck. Um, let's go double blue. We'll cycle this. Bolus would be bad right now. Bolus would be very, very bad. There's some counter. There's some counter action. No. Got me opponent. Gotta get rid of that Sunbird's Invocation. The card is so mean, but yeah. Uh, let me go back and read chat. I know you guys have some, some replies to what I said. Um, Carter says, yeah, when um, he makes rotation-proof decks, it's uh, just due to um, the favorite that... Oh, the fact that uh, you know the cards, you get used to them, and probably will still have some value, in-game value, that is, uh, once rotation comes around. Uh, true, but we know that our format's going to change so much. Um, but... 
Yeah, I all right, so I get that. Not about going and saying, hey, look, these new decks are running, you know, Chandra, which is about to rotate. I'm not going to go buy Chandra's, things like that. Um, let's see if we can get this down. Oh, well. Whatever. I'm going to have one mana floating. I'm not worried about it. It's worth undoing all this, these things. Supreme Will? Alright. Got me, opponent. You've got me. You've gotten me good, opponents. Um, let's see, Justin Clay says, I mean, I would uh, do it probably not the scavenger grounds where you have a, what, you guys are talking about something completely different. My bad. My bad, I didn't mean to jump in you guys' conversation there. Okay. Clock of worm number two. Um, I mean, I expect that he kills it with a Ros Veroska's Contempt. I don't think that he took his Veroska's Contempt out, but yeah. Yeah, so we don't get to draw our card. Oh, pooey. Hey, we're at 33 life, though. Grounded flying. What? I missed it. Thank you for subscribing, Grounded. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm just not big on rotation-proof decks. I, I, I'm not big on budget decks either. I, I don't like the idea of building on a budget. I don't like the idea of, um, of not playing with... Um, I don't like playing with a constrict, constricted card pool when everyone else is not. So I'm just, I'm just not big on it. Xander Buck, hey man, made the live stream for the first time. Cool deck. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Xander. That's uh, glad that you're here. Um, hopefully, you can have some fun with us here. He's going to swing. Oh my god, he's going to swing. Another counter? Oh my goodness. You brought in all the counters, huh, opponent? Well, got me. You got me, opponent. Oh no. Not like these. Not like this. I don't know if we can deal with that bolus. He flips the bolus. We're in some major trouble. Major trouble. Although he ain't got a lot of action here in the side, uh, in the. I should have sacked that. I should have sacked that. And just gotten rid of everything so that he couldn't like gear Hulk back into Supreme Wills and stuff. It's not like we needed our grave, and Bolus bringing back our Plaka Worm is not going to be cool. So he hits land. Yeah. We need some action. Can you stop it? And I guess he can stop it, right? Nagate. Nagate will stop it. So we need him to just not hit a land. He hits a land. This bolus flips. There's an Argyle's Bloodfast. Um, yeah, he's going to be digging for land here. Digging again. Turning all of these cards, or all these, all of his life into cards. Not cool for us. Oh, and we hit yet another land. Life is not good. Life is not good. Okay. 
Bolus just doing work. All right, so flip your bolus. Flip your bolus, bring back our plock of worm, and I don't think we can come back from this. I mean, maybe, but it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult, especially when you bring back plock worm. Hey, I'm not 100% that that's what he's going to do, but it's what I would do. Hey, look, plock of worm. Um, all right. The only thing we can do is just pass here and then try to settle our own placa worm. Yo, everyone, go check out the Mono Fight Life game aggro deck on the Reddit. Another moderator has handled this. Well, okay, other moderator. Good on you. Well, go away now. Like, like, what is. Why is this still up there? I get it. The other moderator took care of it. Well, we'll settle his wreckage. Um, I mean, it's it's our block of worm, so I mean, it doesn't hurt him a lot. I mean, that's pretty much all he can bring back right now. There's no other creatures in the grave anywhere. Although we can throw some in the grave now. What? Xander! Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. Um, bourbon down the hatch tonight? No. I, um, I usually... I usually buy a bottle of bourbon about once a month. Um... It'll last about two weeks, and then I, I don't really care about bourbon from that point forward. Um, I'm not a big drinker. I, I like to drink and have a little bit of fun every now and then. Um, so, yeah, sure. Like, maybe I'll go, uh, maybe I'll go buy, a, buy a bottle here in a few days, and maybe we'll have some, some bourbon matches, but I don't actually keep bourbon on hand. So, yeah. Um... But thank you very much, Sander. I, I do appreciate it. Where did you do that donation? Like it didn't pop up in the YouTube chat. Like did you did you do that through Streamlabs? There it is. Hey. Wow, YouTube. So late. If I sacrificed that, yeah, exactly. If I would have sacrificed, I would have actually stopped it, and I should have sacrificed it because he wouldn't have been able to get back my block of worm. Um, he just, he wouldn't have. Oh my goodness! This is a 23 land deck, guys. 23 land deck. I'm hanging on just to be hanging on, but yeah, this is um, this is cool, I guess. YouTube trying to censor you? Uh, you you had read it in the in the conversation. Um, so YouTube tries to avoid. Um, <laughs> YouTube is a perfect system with no flaws whatsoever. Quoting yourself from Sunday. I remember that. Yes. Um, it is what it is. Like YouTube's communication with Google is not the greatest thing in the world either. So, oh, he, the lock is on, ladies and gentlemen. He has got it. I don't think there's a single way that we could pull out of this. I don't think that there's a, a top deck that would save us. Um, and that 100% is not it. Let's uh, let's begin sideboarding. Let's begin side. Well, we got game one, um, so that's cool. I think I want to keep cast out. Um, the opponent's definitely going to be bringing in or having all of those counter spells. So what do we want to do versus old Bolus? Yeah, cast out's hundred percent coming in. Um, Settle's good. But it's not the greatest thing in the world. 
Um, maybe. Like on the play, I definitely think that I... Let's get rid of Sandworm's Convergence. I'm keeping the Overwhelming Splendor because it means that, like, Bolus does nothing. I'll drop one seal away because I have brought the cast outs in. But you say cut an invocation or two? Hey, we could. This is my last game of the night, and I'm I'm actually boarding more for having fun and uh, providing a little bit of entertainment than I am boarding for actually beating the uh, beating the the uh, opponent. Like I'm I'm taking a risk. I, I'm definitely just taking a risk here to, to see if I can I can fire off. Um, I'm gonna mulligan this. Sure, looks great. Like if we're ever gonna be able to do our thing, this is a hand that we can do it with. So yeah, leave that on top. Seems fine. Considering we get to you know turn one of scatter groves and then turn two um, play a Play a knight, and then turn three, play a gift of paradise, turn four, play an aid from the cow, and ten are roll from there. Um, yeah, we'll play the root frag. <clears throat> Xander, meant to send more the first time. Thanks for the great content. Well, sir, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I am not for sure if you're familiar with our music list. This will make you the new uh, stream boss, and one of the things I'm trying to do for stream boss takeovers is uh, pick the next song. So if uh, if you know any of our songs that you like, um, then uh, by all means, let me know, and you can pick the next song. We also um, I'm also willing to down songs. I'm going to play the basic because I really want to be able to put my gift of paradise on a basic land so we can't feel to ruin it um so that's that's why i'm gonna go ahead and play the basic here uh, but yeah um if you guys have songs that you you would like for me to um to add to our list um then by all means let me know they do need to come from OC Remix because I've never had a problem with uh, playing music from OC Remix as far as like YouTube law like YouTube law goes um, so yeah like uh, I haven't been demonetized or anything by any uh, any of OC Remix music so I just kind of stick there but there's a ton of really cool um, you know older um, like video games 8-bit sound like 8-bit 8-bit games, things like that. There's just a, a lot of really, really cool, um, really cool songs there that, that come from video games and stuff that most of us grew up with. So, by all means, pick you a song and um, and we'll uh, we'll play it next. Like um, I've got Ninja Turtles, Metal Gear Solid, Kirby, Mario, um, you know, Metroid. Uh, Battle Toads, Donkey Kong, uh, Street Fighter, Elder Scrolls, Legend of Zelda, um, Diablo, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, um, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, pick something and we'll play it. And pretty much picking anything I didn't just say though, we uh, we we won't uh, we won't be able to play. That was most of what I have right now. Um, I had to rebuild the collection recently, so I'm, I'm still looking for more music. Um, I lost my Pokemon Red song that I, I loved so much. Uh, I've, got to, I've got to find that again. Should I have swung there? I probably should have swung, shouldn't I? I consider I can't block this thing. Yeah, I was busy talking. Nothing from any games. No, um, this is the... Most of the, the of everything just comes from older games, so um, gift means that we'll be able to to play our Plaka Worm next turn. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we still need to hit a land before we can play this Plaka Worm. Uh, 
All right, well, I mean, definitely going to be trying to get in here, considering we can't really stop anything. Play the Techno Mario song again. That's some good stuff. Good stuff. Um, all right, so I think you're talking about Caravan Bowser. That is, like, probably everyone's most favorite song. So this song is going off. Um, so here we go. Here comes um, Caravan Bowser. Hold on, Street Fighter. Not your turn yet. There you go. And I'll give you guys a little bit more volume. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cycle this cast out here. This song is some good stuff, isn't it? Ooh. I don't know if we're cycling casts out. We may just cast out this uh, Argyle's Bloodfast. He's been trapped on lands for a while. Alright. Okay, I'll cycle it. I really want to hit a land so I can get this Placa Worm. There it is. Whoa, undo. Undo. I need double green. And more double green. Like a worm. And pow. Hit him. There we go. Yeah, most most people seem to like this song. Like, um, I was originally going to try to take a part of the song and turn it into an intro or something like that, um, but I don't know. Um, I still need to get up with Alba T. Ross. Um, he offered to make a make an intro. Uh, he's a he's a aspiring musician, um, so he offered to make a, an intro for the, for the channel. So uh, I might need to get up with Alba T. Ross and, and say, you know what? Let's see. Let's hear what you got. Um, so, just got home, now on your computer, gonna brew up a red-green Dryer Ballard deck for Patreon's last chance deck. See, thank you. Like, so, that means you're actually taking, taking my word on, uh, hey, let's, let's try this. Let's try these, these, um, uh, these new decks. I mean, this is gonna hurt opponent. This is gonna hurt a lot. So that dies to first strike. Like, he scoops here, right? Like, we just play Block of Worm and he just scoops, right? Like, is there anything in his wheelhouse that beats second Block of Worm? I keep doing it. It's only with this one. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's got anything that can beat a second block of worm. Worm kill. But yeah, I, I ask all of my patrons to to build a um, like to build like brew your last chance decks this month. You know, let's see what uh, what's what's going to happen. Let's um, let's. Let's try to make something before it goes away, and and uh, it looks like uh, Justin's uh, getting on, in on that, trying to make a Gyre Ballard uh, deck. Uh, red, black Gyre Ballard. Like, what are you trying to cast? Like, what's uh, what are the things that are going away that uh, that you're trying to cast? Um, yeah, we lose absolutely everything before Ixlon, so um, you know that's that's gonna be that's gonna be a thing. Um, alright guys, so, I hope you like the aid from the Kyle deck, um, I think we lost one game out of the games we played, I don't even remember how many we played, I know we beat, um, we beat Grixis and, and things like that, so that was fun, um, yeah, uh, it's three separate sets that just happened to take place on Ravnica, and have to do with Ravnica, he says mocking wizards R and D. It's not a block. It's just three sets of that. It's the 
finale. All right, so um, it is the the finale of um, of the Nickel Bolas storyline. So we're talking about the storyline that was created by Richard Garfield in Alpha Beta that era when when um, when they first started trying to come up with a story to put behind you know the cards and things like that they started coming up with you know there's this entity and the and the, the dragon wars and things like that and then later came you know these uh these planeswalkers and they kept bumping into bolus and, and we have the story of liliana and and her deal with the demons and then now we're finding out that bolus was the original contract holder when he's actually the one who took her to make the deal with the demons um, so he's the original contract holder for all of Liliana's power. So, uh, like, there's all of these different like little things that are starting to tie in together, and we're starting to get more of the story than we've ever had before. And now we've got this like this love thing going on between two previous enemies between the Alfaraska and Jace, which I think is awesome. Um, I think it's cool that we actually we put a little. Uh, I've got to make that a Nightbot thing. Richard, the All Father, Garfield. I've, I've got to make make that a a nightbot thing. I, I will try to remember to do that. But yeah, um, like now we're getting this storyline of of Ravnica, and everything's supposed to end right here. So um, if you haven't heard much about the storyline, if you like lore at all, I definitely definitely recommend you know either popping in over at All for One here on YouTube, uh, which is um, I think it's All for Voice of All. That's it, Voice of All here on on um, on YouTube or check out the Aether Hub. Uh, Simon does a really good, uh, really good lore bit over there on the Aether Hub. I highly recommend you guys check them out. Get caught up a little bit on the lore. Um, uh, Voice of All does does some great voiceovers and stuff like that. Where Simon will just kind of go through and tell you the lore. Where Voice of All will give you a story. And um, you're talking about some great reading when you're just riding around, um, riding around in your car, doing things like that. Um, you know, Voice of All is just really really good uh, stuff so um, but yeah uh, we're coming up on the end of the bolus storyline and um, everything's kind of it's kind of getting hectic and do you really think bolus is gonna die I think the bad guy has to die but is bolus really the bad guy and honestly if we don't get a visit planeswalker I'm gonna riot like come on damn it he's got a spark let's have this um, but then again, he may only be not walking because he's protecting his guild from Bulbas. So, um, oh, oh, I want to see that Niv Mizzet Bulbas fight. Oh my goodness, I've dreamed about such things. Um, you want Ugin back? Um, the spirit of Ugin may still be around. Um, you know, Ugin is the one who helped Al, or uh, not Al um, Azor like create the the immortal sun uh, oh my goodness the immortal sun should have been in this deck guys um, we could have easily gotten rid of Chandra or something like that I should have put the immortal sun in the deck so yeah uh, you're frothing at the mouth for that fight hey me too madness man that that fight would be so so good um, but yeah uh, Ravnica is going to be the the, the end of the this storyline and from that point forward we brought like wizards has said uh, that we won't see as much of um, you fool um, <laughs> right for not putting in the uh, immobile sun um, it would have been great yeah but anyway um, yeah uh, Ravnica is going to supposedly the end of the, the gatewatch storyline the, the fight of Bolas storyline um, we got to see, you know, Bolus's real plans. He had created the, the um, or he had went to Amonkhet so long ago for the, for the, um, what was it, uh, Lapis or whatever that was there. That that the blue stuff that they built the cartouches out of to put, you know, to make eternalized creatures and things. And and because of that, those are supposed to be able to be shifted across planes. So he's supposed to be able to bring his army of these eternalized creatures to. Uh, across um, a plains, and he's got the planar bridge set up. Um, we know that he is trying to rip the immortal sun, or already has, through 
um, the multiverse to pull it somewhere else. We know that Tezzeret is already doing that, and they're trying to create this huge trap, and he wants to trap all Planeswalkers somewhere at some point. So we, we think all of that's going to go down at Ravnica, or on Ravnica, which um, for those of you that don't know, it's a whole world is one big city. And it's nothing but, you know, a bunch of guilds, and he would be able to trap so much power there, it would be ridiculous. And then at that point, once he had trapped all of that power there, he would be able to consume all of Ravnica and draw in all that power for himself. So he's definitely trying to destroy all the walkers and all the other things, uh, which is kind of why he told Varaska, Sure, you can be the leader of the Golgari. Go to Ixlan, find me this this thing, let Ralzaric know... Ralzeric will tell Tezzeret, Tezzeret will pull it across the the uh, the multiverse, and you can leave and go back to Ravnica, no problem. I'll make you the the guild leader. Well, yeah, all of that's gonna happen. So we're we're gonna see, we're gonna see all this craziness. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to Ravnica. I'm looking forward to you know the 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 gods of Amonkhet leaving. I, I did really, really wish that the Scorpion God would have been more powerful in our meta, that he would have been able to do other things, but unfortunately he wasn't. Um, someone asked the other day for a um, Hapatra deck. I always called Hapatra a trap, kind of like I'm currently calling Rada a trap. Um, but um, some people were asking for a Hapatra deck the other day, so we may make a Jun Hapatra deck, have some, a little bit of fun with that, play with uh, you know this, the Scorpion God. Uh, before he rotates. I definitely want to play with the Scorpion God and the Locust God before they rotate. Um, so we might play around with some, those ideas for a little bit. But um, guys, this was my deck. I hope you guys liked it. I Most of you seem to like it. Um, I know I got a little bit sporadic there trying to make plays, trying to hold conversations, things like that. So um, I definitely... Uh, I definitely... Uh, you know, lost some conversations there, didn't finish some thoughts, so thank you guys for, for sticking around with me on that. Again, hope you liked the deck. I had a lot of fun playing it. I hope you had fun watching it. And um, if you want to help support the channel, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can do it on Patreon. You can do it right here in the stream. You can actually join the community here on stream. You'll get that nice little green name tag in chat. Um, and it's like uh, being a YouTube or a um, Twitch subscriber. So if you want to do that, you can. You'll get uh, emojis and things. We have a ton of emojis, um, you know, that that'll help you express your opinion. Whether you want to, you know, show that I've made a punt or you want to be quick with that mana screw, um, you can do that. But yeah, the blue name is better. Yeah, well, those are not for purchase. So I like I've had people go, hey, what do I got to do to get a uh, get moderator? Want that? Want that? Um, I just picked people. Yeah, I picked people that uh that I just said, you know what? This person will be a good moderator. Um, so yeah, um, there's a couple of you guys that I'd be willing to moderate, but as of right now, we've got enough. Uh, we we seem to have a moderator in chat at all times, so yeah. Um, crew fix doesn't come around a lot anymore, so I, I may end up taking crew fix's moderation uh, away and, and passing it on to one of you other guys. So I'll, I'll definitely pick somebody that is a, that's kind of always here. But yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe, comment, all these other things. You're not here enough to be a moderator, Nerb. But yeah, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm scared of you having moderator privileges. Yeah, <laughs> right. Even Zax is like, you're hardly here. You wish you had a red name. Oh, see, that'd be cool. Uh, we can't do that though. Either way, it was a lot of fun. We uh, we hope to see you tomorrow night. We're gonna be playing Mardu. Mardu Sunbird's Invocation. We got a little bit of taste of Sunbird's Invocation, but there are four copies of Sunbird's Invocation in tomorrow's deck. So uh, we'll be checking that out. It is an Approach of the Second Sun deck. So oh, you'd be here more if you were a mod. So is that is that my trick? If I if I mod you, we have more nerve action. I don't know if I can put up with the wit. Deck list? No, 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 no. I don't. Um, I the the deck list is not finalized. I've got to get some more test games with it. Uh, you guys will notice that I normally don't even have most of my decks um, pulled up. I, I save them on file um, and then just like load them from there. Uh, only decks that I expect to to play uh, again. You know what? I've got to I've got to back off this this mill deck here now. That's right, Zach. I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna do it, Zax. It won't let me delete it. You know, we're not even gonna worry about it. Anyway, guys, 
My name's Eric. We'll see you next time. Um, let's, uh, I guess we'll go out on, like, Metroid or something, right? Uh, yeah. Metroid. Here we go. Enjoy the music, guys. We'll see you next time.